Good morning, this is Audrey and welcome to the Oak Ridge Local News Station. Today we are going to talk with some new and older Oak Ridge citizens who are going to answer some questions. But first, the weather. Hello, my name is Dominic Sexton. I'm here with the weather. Today in Oak Ridge, it's a high of 79 and a low of 55 with a 10% chance of precipitation. Thank you, Dominic. Looks like we're going to have a nice day ahead. Now we're going to go ahead and hand it over to Maddie. The city of Oak Ridge is about 20 miles west of Knoxville and is surrounded by Clinch River and Cumberland Mountains. The American government recently bought 60,000 acres along the East Coast where they plan to relocate thousands of citizens. Here's a local citizen to give some insight on what is going on like recently. As a mother, it was very hard when my 12-year-old son came home from work devastated that the only town he ever knew was being torn apart. I was called off from work after the government informed us residents that the land was needed for war efforts and we must leave. My family had 40 acres and we only got $900 from the government. How am I supposed to relocate my family with such little money? Oh my gosh, that is so horrible. Now we're going to talk to one of the citizens that were ordered to stay on the land and help with the secret city. Now we are here with a citizen who is required to stay here in Oak, or Oak Ridge. So tell me, what was it like? I saw gates within gates and barbed wire fences and signs of warning of prohibited zones and restricted areas and posters in dormitories, offices, and stores saying what you see here, what you do here, what you hear here, when you leave, let it stay here. All over the place, seemingly planless at first, are of jumble of hutments, barracks, dormitories, trailer coops, the house and apartments. The overall impression is a combination of an army base, boomtown, construction camp and a summer resort. This is not the Oak Ridge I know and love. That sounds so hard. Thank you for sharing your story. What used to be the town of Oak Ridge is now referred to as Site X or Clinton Engineering Works. It is suspected that this area was chosen because it is very rural, ideal for a project needed to be kept secret. The nuclear plants were hidden in valleys and separated by miles of woods. Now that you have heard from firsthand from the original citizens of Oak Ridge, we are going to hand it over to our other anchor, Kristen, who is with the employees and residents of Site X. Why, thank you, Maddie. I'm here on Site X near one of the plants with a physicist, Abby. She is here to give us more details on the secrecy and security that was on Site X. Each worker under, underwent rigorous background checks conducted by the FBI before being accepted into Oak Ridge. Now, Abby, can you go in depth more over what it was like, like what background checks and what happened before coming on to Site X? Um, to start off, all workers were sworn to secrecy. If you talked, you weren't there the next day. Every person that worked in, the, uh, in Oak Ridge were given badges um, that pertain to their clearance level. I was a physicist, so I was given a white badge. And, and that's all I know from the uh, Wow, that's intense and seems kind of scary. Now we're going to give it back to Maddie, who's sitting down with a resident at her house. Actually, you're required to have a wife to be able to live together. Interesting. At some times, with the secrecy in Oak Ridge, was it hard between you and your wife? Did it have any impact on your relationship? Well, every time I came from home work, I was a scientist, so I wasn't allowed to tell anything. I just had to go and um, live on and not be able to tell my wife anything that was happening. There was just fights and quarreling. And so eventually, to stop talking about work, we just decided to have a baby. And do you think that this was a good place for you and your wife to raise kids? Well, it is very well planned out. There are a lot of uh, schools nearby, and it looks very safe. So, yeah. And what house letter did you guys have before you were parents, and it was just you and your wife? Uh, we had a house A. Oh, and did you upgrade once you had children? Yes. Okay, thank you for your time, and now let's go back to Anchor Asia. So, Ms. Wheatley, can you tell us exactly what happened, what your husband saw? One day when my husband came home from work, he seemed off and just wasn't himself. He barely mentioned that today that something had happened while on the bus, and uh, he, told, he eventually told me the full story. He told me that when he got on the bus, he had noticed that a colored man was sitting halfway back the bus. 
and uh, after the stop, so did the driver. The driver stopped the bus and pulled it onto the side of the road and then grabbed the guy, making him go to the back of the bus where he belonged. So my husband followed him. Was that the first time your husband had ever witnessed anything like this? And have you ever witnessed anything like this after moving to Oak Ridge? It was the first time he had ever witnessed something like this because he's new to Oak Ridge. But the longer we live here, the more and more segregated this town seems to get. I thank you for coming today, as I know this is a hard topic to talk about. Now back to you, Christian. I was not the only one in the same boat. We, the, um, the entrepreneurs, asked the government that uh, we could make a contract bearing competitors. They also swayed at the offering very high wages. Um, so I saw that you mentioned the contract. Could you explain that a little more in depth so our audience can understand? Yes. This means there is only one chain in each business. Because there is no more entrepreneurs here, were willing to move into the city because they made lots of profit. For example, here in Oak Ridge, there are 12 shopping strips, and each one contains my business, Bart's Laundromat. My business is the only laundromat in town. That makes sense. Thank you for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. This has been Audrey Nielsen, and thank you for listening. We will see you all next week. Do you like to do laundry? Yeah? Well, then come to your local laundromat, because it's the best in town. You are now watching Oak Ridge on our superhero network. The Japanese have attacked our nation. We need to retaliate. So I've come up with an idea for a weapon called the atomic bomb. I can split the atoms for the bombs. I can run the calutron to maximum capacity. With my study of plutonium chemistry, I can help extract plutonium out of here. I can volunteer as a crowd. People just sit on here and practice my research. Amazing job, people. But we need to do this quick, or else we will fail our nation. We will arch you down. We must work in secret. If we don't, our mission will be compromised. Russia sent us the Americans. Wow, you've all done amazingly. I know that will make our country proud. What do you think you're doing? All right. This is going to fall over. Manhattan Project established three secret, secret cities around the country to work on the top secret new nuclear weapon the U.S. military was planning to use on Japan. During this episode, we will walk you through the main production buildings that were established in Oak Ridge, Tennessee to make the atomic bomb. The K-25 building, which was the main building, the S, Y, and X buildings that made the atomic bomb a reality. Then, later on, we will explain how the secret city was kept a secret, and after that, who was hired to work in the, these factories of top secret machines and science. Now introducing our next historian, Aubrey, with the K-25 plan. The K-25 facility in Oak Ridge, Tennessee was built in 1943 and was completed in 1945. It cost approximately $500 million to build. The purpose of the facility was to produce enriched uranium for atomic bombs. This was done by the gaseous diffusion method. Employment in the K-25 building would peak at 25,000 employees. The plant was four stories tall and it spanned 44 acres. The first level stored auxiliary equipment, which includes switch gears and air handling systems. The second floor contained the thousands of converters for the gaseous diffusion process. The third floor stored many pipes, which ran throughout the facility and was enclosed in steel panels. And the fourth floor was the operating floor. And the fourth floor includes hundreds of control devices that aid in, in operation of the plant. The enriched uranium that was produced at the K-25 plant and other Clinton Engineer work facilities was the uranium that fueled the little boy atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. The X-10 reactor is considered one of the most important aspects of Oak Ridge and the Manhattan Project. Without this reactor, the research going on at Oak Ridge would be theoretical rather than applicable. The main job that the reactor served was to transform uranium-238 into plutonium-239. This was done by taking new neutrons from the uranium that was released during the fission process and then converting it into plutonium. Because the process is very dangerous, a shield was created consisting of several feet of concrete and 24 feet of graphite on each side. 
Large amounts of uranium-238 were held underwater for several weeks in the building in order for the slugs, or rods of uranium, to cool and irradiate. Once the slugs were ready, they were extracted for a process known as chemical separation. While the X-10 building's main purpose was to was for the production of plutonium, it also gave many opportunities for amateur engineers and technicians to gain practice in the field of nuclear research for when they did further work at Oak Ridge or if they decided to move to facilities like Hanford. The S-50 power plant was one of the little production. Minuscule information was known at first about the plant or what was going on inside of it. Around 1944, gaseous diffusion barrier difficulties continued. Broad concerns over meeting production headlines arose and grew over the next few years. The liquid thermal diffusion process of separating uranium received a second chance within Oak Ridge. On July 6, 1994, H.K. Ferguson Company of Cleveland, Ohio, broke ground on a liquid thermal diffusion plant called S-50. This plant was to serve as a feeder process to the electromagnet plant Y-12. S-50 was originally powered with steam from the powerhouse complex. As the massive K-25 gaseous diffusion plant came online and more steam was more required, a new steam plant, F-06, was built to provide a supplemental steam. The plant had several other support facilities, including the F-02 pump house, F-03 water treatment plant, F-04 switch house, F-05 laboratory number two, F-06 boiler plant, F-07 material shop, F-08 laboratory number two, and the F-10 machine shop. The post-war assessment determined that gaseous diffusion was the most productive and economical method of uranium enhancement. Consequently, the S-50 plant was shut down on September 1945 and demolished in 1947. The Y-12 reactor was a vital aspect of the Manhattan Project. Built in 1943, it was a producer of enriched uranium at Oak Ridge, also was responsible for the uranium used in the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The Y-12 was a multi-stage operation made to both separate and enrich uranium. Separation was done through the use of caltrons. This left uranium-238, a depleted form of uranium. That was then transferred to the X-10 and used there. The enrichment process used gaseous diffusion in order to make a concentrated form of uranium-235. This was then used in the atomic bomb known as Little Boy. The work that was done at Oak Ridge and the Y-12 plant led to great leaps in the Manhattan Project, but most of the workers at the plant had little idea about the magnitude of what they were truly doing. This was due to the hush-hush nature of Oak Ridge itself. Next, we have a woman speaking about her days working in an Oak Ridge factory as a Coltrane girl. Outside of the Y-12 facility, there are young women just out of high school, already at work. The young girls are working alongside scientists. They are working on monitoring and maintaining the Calutrin. These young women are referred to as the Calutrin girls. I remember sitting there watching the machine. I didn't know what I was doing or why. All I knew was that the other workers and the occasional soldier told me my work is vital to the war efforts. This Calutrin girl was not the only one who was told this. Since the bomb was meant to be kept a secret, they were told very little about their work. I was working at my station, and as the weeks went by, I noticed that anyone who would ask too many questions was quickly out of a job. The only thing we could do was stay quiet and do our jobs. Security was tight. Too much information revealed to civilians would result in either a loss of a job or a loss of a life, and the shifts were not any better than keeping the secret. We worked in 24-hour shifts, almost nonstop. All we did for monitoring was to watch the Caltron and make sure to inform a superior if anything were to go wrong. We did maintenance by doing slight adjustment to the knobs. We were deemed better since we had what is called a female's touch. Some of the Caltron girls did not know what they were doing until nearly 50 years later after the bomb had been dropped. So, in this show you have learned a little more about the production in Oak Ridge, Tennessee in the times of World War II. We have gained knowledge about how the city kept the project a secret, as well as the confidentiality of the residents and workers. Next, we talked about the people who worked in the buildings, along with what each building specialized in and contained. Now that is all the time for tonight. Thank you for watching. Until next time on the History and Secrets of Spies.